What's up guys, it's Subsy here and this is a bit of a different video for me to do. Um, I've got in front of me here the Surface Pro X and this isn't actually a video on the Surface Pro X, it's more a video about Windows on ARM. Now there's tons of videos out there about Windows on ARM and how you can use it or you can't use it for certain scenarios, so how um, you can do it for web browsing or office documents and stuff like that, or if you can try to do content creation or how Photoshop runs on this and whatnot. But I was thinking that Windows and ARM needs ARM applications and the only way to do that is if developers are convinced to port their applications to ARM or make new applications for their ARM products that they're going to be targeting. And if they want to do that, the best way for them to do that is to actually develop an application on the ARM platform. And that got me thinking on what there actually is for like in terms of like IDE support and like development support on ARM natively that doesn't have to be emulated on 32-bit or isn't supported with the 64-bit lack of emulation. So that got me thinking about web development because that's sort of the easiest place to start and that's sort of a big push going forward and it has been for some time. Now web development doesn't actually need much, like if you think about it in, in its core it doesn't need much, it needs what a text editor and a browser, but if you want to do a bit more, say you want to use React or you want to use Angular, can you do that on, on ARM? And it turns out you, you can. Um, so if you just do only front end development, you can do your entire work stack on an ARM device uh, with no emulation required. So everything would run natively. So um, Node it runs on ARM, uh, VS Code has now been compiled and is stable and has a release on ARM. Um, so that's not emulated on 32-bit. And then of course you get um, Microsoft Edge, which runs on Chromium on ARM. Now that's an entire workflow done on ARM natively. So I thought I'd make a video about how to set this up, and how does it work and is it actually good? How does it perform? And what it's actually like developing something on the ARM platform and what are the pros and cons and what sort of stuff do you run into that you wouldn't normally run into on a normal um, sort of x86 architecture. So for the past week or two, I've been using the Surface Pro X just for that purpose, seeing if I can do it. Um, it's not been my only device, I've been using my XPS and my iPad Pro for other stuff, but this has been my sort of go-to web development device. So I thought I'd run you guys through how to set it up and what the pros and cons I've run into over the past couple of weeks. But yeah, let's just jump straight into it now. And as you can see here, I have my desktop over here and it looks like a, a normal Windows desktop. Of course, it's running Windows. Um, you need two things to download. So what I'm going to set up here is the Angular sort of environment and Node and VS Code as the primary code editor. So to download Node, all you need to do is go to this link over here. Now the latest version of Node is actually version um, 14 point something. Um, and we can see that if we just go up a level here, um, but they're not compiled for ARM, so they won't work. Um, the last one that was compiled for ARM is the 12.15.0, which is still fairly new. It's from February this year, so it's not too bad. And you do get um, um, version 6. Point something of NPM with that. Um, so if you download the zip here, that will be fine. Um, I've got it downloaded already, so I'll just extract that later on. Um, and then you need VS Code. So I'll put both of the links in the description below. Um, so if you go over here, you click other platforms just to make sure you're getting the ARM version, not the 32-bit or the 64-bit, which wouldn't work at all. Um, download the ARM installer, and then you should end up with two downloaded files. Um, now we're just going to install the VS Code first. Uh, let's accept the agreement, uh, of course we have to, and uh, it's going to install to app data, I don't mind that, let's do that, and da -da -da. Yep. let's just do that, and of course you can enable to open with code if you want to, but I just don't like my right click button to be cluttered with anything, um, and whilst that's doing that, let's open up the node thing that we downloaded. And as you can see, everything is listed here. What you normally do with Node, if you download it and set up like this, is uh, we need to copy it into a folder and sort of put a path variable to that. What I like to do is put it in the program files itself because I like my apps to live there as and when they can. Now, when you go to your local disk on ARM, it's a bit different. So when you have a 64-bit computer, you normally have the program files and you have the x86 folder, which is your 32-bit files. Now, you can think of program files as sort of your baseline. That's your like natively supported, everything works perfectly um, section. Then on the 64, bit windows um, the x86 folder was a 32-bit which works perfectly but it's not really at that level 
This has an, another level in between, um, so this has the program files, which means the ARM64 platform. Uh, then it has the ARM folder, which is uh, ARM files and stuff, which uh, is for the previous versions of ARM that Windows supported. Um, and then you have the x86 folder, which is only 32-bit apps, which are emulated on the platform. Um, there is no 64-bit support. So for our use case, because Node is a native on this version of ARM64, uh, we put it in the program files without any uh, anything after that folder. So if we go into our program files folder with no nothing at the end, um, so no ARM, no x86, just the normal program files, and let's make a folder in here. Uh, continue, we need permissions, Node.js. And if we go into here, and if we copy everything from this folder into here, and as you can see at the same time, we'll just continue with that, at the same time this has completed. Um, whilst that's happening in the background, let me just launch VS Code and see it run. And here we go. Uh, let me just pin this to my taskbar because we're going to need it next. And yes, let's just close that. And of course we have support for Windows subsystem of Linux if you want that. Um, but uh, we don't need that. So what we have here is VS Code running, everything's fine. What I'm going to do is come back to this uh, because I just want to set up Node properly first and um, I'll get back to you guys after this has finished copying. So if I open a command window in the actual directory here, um, it should work. So we should be able to do Node version, uh, there we go, Node 12.15.0 um, and the npm version as uh, 6.13.4. Okay, so that's awesome, but what we want to do is we want to, we want to make that accessible anywhere, um, not just in this folder. So what we need to do for that is just go to our environment variable. So if we just start and then type and then type in env and it should pop up. Um, and we have it open here now. Um, if we go into here and in your system variables, if you define it as a path, so you click that, click edit and create a new path and uh, paste in the directory and click OK and uh, make sure you've got no open um, like PowerShell or command windows um, because you will need to restart them in order to use this so if we click OK and then OK and so then if I open uh, terminal and I've got terminal the preview build installed which you can install from the windows store uh, if you've never used it it's so much better than using command prompt or PowerShell um, it's got those within it and um, you have the choice of whatever you want um, but it's just it looks a lot nicer and works a lot better so get it if you don't have it um, if I do here so node you can see um, I have the same thing here so with both node and npm because I've added it to the path variable in my system properties um, there we go and so that's node up and running uh, across pretty much everything um, now what we need to do is I uh, need to open that back up um, is install angular so the command to install angular um, if you've never done it um, but I'm assuming um, if you're following this this far you've done it before um, it's just through the node package manager so you just do um, npm install uh, and um, let's make it global at angular cli if I can type correctly and uh, that should install angular now I've installed this already um, or I didn't uninstall it, so maybe um, it's not installed. Okay, that took a bit longer than I was expecting, but yeah, it's now installed uh, globally uh, Angular. So if I do ng version, I can't spell, that's not anything correct. There we go. Uh, Angular CLI for Angular version 10 with IP. Um, okay, so that's now installed. So what we need to do now is actually set up uh, a new project and uh, use VS Code. Let's see. So the actual um, installation and everything is done now. What we want to do is make it better and um, let's launch VS Code. So what we want to do is go to the packages um, or the extensions and type in Edge. And then we don't want to get the debugger from Microsoft Edge. We want to get it for Microsoft Edge Chromium. We want to basically attach to that debugger or attach the debugger to that uh, same as we would do with um, Google Chrome, for example. Um, and that has installed. And so what we can do now is actually let's close that. Let's close VS Code again. Um, if we're in here, so let's make a folder in. Uh, 
tests. There we go. So CD, uh, let's go into test. So my terminal just crashed and I'm back in here and let's just uh, make a new Angular project. So that's ng new. And uh, what's the name? Let's do YouTube. And I am very bad at typing today. Uh, we don't need routing for this. Uh, let's just do SCSS. Why not? Uh, let's make it good. And um, the packages are now installing, and that shouldn't take too long. Um, big air quotes there. Should not take too long, but it probably will. So um, I'll resume once that's done. So that's now completed, and uh, Git doesn't recognize that's fine. So if we actually look at our workspace now, if I go to, let's go to my folder, which is where I made the folder, test YouTube. And now we have a project here. So if we actually did CD and then uh, ng start, and that came up and my mistake, it's not ng start, it's ng serve. Um, I'm not with it today um, and that should go up in a second and then we can just go to localhost 4200 by default and there we go compiling uh, let's just let's just type it in by the time it takes me to type it in uh, this might actually get done uh, let's go here it's compiling it's not the fastest, I have to say that. But once it is compiled and um, running, then it is fine. And here we go, your app is up and running. Uh, that's not what it says, it says YouTube app is running. I don't know why I said the other. Um, but here we go, this is up and running. So now what we can do is actually um, open it in VS Code. Uh, let's do that, let's do it the old fashioned way of dragging it into there. So here we go, we have the project open in VS Code and then if we come back into here and we actually install the debugger for Edge and when that's done let's switch back to our debug stuff and set up a launch config for that um, or configuration and let's do... Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see, what can we, what can we add? Let's just do this and what we want to do is actually the edge. So now if we launch the project from within, uh, we should get a browser and it should load and we should be able to see everything in the dev tools and then you know put in breakpoints and debug through this if we need be. So let's put a breakpoint here. Will it hit it? Um, let's see. There we go, it's hit the breakpoint. And as you can see, we're doing everything that we need to do for front-end web development within Windows on ARM here. And everything is running locally and natively. Um, and it's it's not the fastest, um, I've got to say that, especially when it comes to the Edge dev tools, which are really, really slow. Um, but it's not the worst thing in the world. So that pretty much concludes today's video. If you guys enjoyed this style of video, be sure to let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of this style or more um, sort of step-by-step um, -step walkthroughs on how to do stuff um, or you want to see more content on Windows and ARM whilst I still have this tablet because I probably will get rid of it soon um, because I don't have much use for it and um, be sure to let me know if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button uh, if you want to see more content um, but as always it's been Subzi here and I'll see you guys next time